All right, good afternoon, everyone. Hope you're having a happy Tuesday. All right, well, let's start with the roll. Okay, Jimmy. Here. Joanna. Here. Ashley. That is She's at a soccer game. All right, thank you. Marissa. I'm here. Jerrica. Here. Courtney. Here. Jada. Here. Autumn. Here. Matthew. I'm here. Weston. Here. Chan. I think I went to the restroom real quick. Okay. Kelly. Here. Seth. Here. Trey. Here. Kayla. Here. Tobias. Here. Nathan. Aki. Rebecca. Here. All right. So, um, so Ashley's not here, and then Chan, we think, is coming. All right, so let's see. So, Sholo, you guys have, like, hat day or something? Uh, yes, it helps us feel more comfortable because someone left us a weird note. <laughs> someone left you a weird note? Yeah, it said, oh, yeah. it said he can see you. And we don't know what it's talking about at all. Well, it could be it could be God. Uh, it could be Santa Claus, uh, or it could be me, uh, or maybe who's ever the guy that's recording. Uh, you know the videos they they watch the they watch it and they know if you've been sleeping and they know if you're awake and all that kind of stuff. So well, we there weren't any presents, so we ruled out Santa Claus. We decided that God probably wouldn't leave us a note, and we didn't think it was professional enough for the people who are like a recording. So we just think it's some random person. That some random that. stalker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh oh, that's that's not good. But oh well. Well. Well, at least you've got your hats on. That may maybe make you feel a little more incognito um so that's good and then uh let's see what uh is is it uh winslow that's fuzzy again yes yes sir so you know i this morning it wasn't fuzzy i don't know what's going on with you guys um maybe someone's uh Monday Maybe it was the person that left a note at a show. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't want him to recognize your, I mean, that person's face or something? So That's smart of you. Oh, it's very smart. smart. Yeah, that's good. Well, all right. Well, let's, uh, yeah, I don't know what to think about it. I, I know that, um, Oh, do this. If someone, and maybe we've tried this before, but if you go to your Touch 10 unit there in Winslow, and if you change the camera setting and then change it back, sometimes it reboots and uh, and and that works. I mean, I, I do that quite a bit, and it works sometimes. So you might try that. So, um... So, Showa, do you guys have homecoming this week? Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, and who are you playing? Winslow. 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 Oh, you're playing Winslow. So that's so, why Winslow's fuzzed out, right? Yeah. Don't, they don't want uh, right. you to identify them in a lineup or something. If they, um, you know. I don't think they need to worry. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's no worry from our All right. 
And then, Mogion, I'm coming to your uh, volleyball game tonight. So, um, anyway, I'll be rooting for you individually. Um, no, who do I, do I have? I, I know we had said that at least one person in here is on the team, right? It, it's me and Boo. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Awesome. All yeah, right, you don't well, have to worry, though. It's okay. We're going to win. <laughs> I'm not worried. I'm not worried. <laughs> uh, but I will be cheering. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll hear me cheering. Uh, but anyway, I hope we have a good time. So, uh, anyway, well, um, let's see what else. So, uh, so uh, Mogi, on your homecoming's next week. Two. Weeks. Yeah, two weeks. Okay. All right, and then uh, hope he wins yours. It was last week. It was last week. Uh, did you win? Yeah. Who did you play? Grand Hills. Okay. All right. Very cool. All right. Mr. So there's Tom. Yeah. Are you going to come to our homecoming game? Uh, it's I Mr. might. Uh, Joseph City. I might, since it's uh, I. They're actually Joseph City and Mogon have played some pretty epic games. Yeah. Um, last year's Oh. And not all the time has Joseph City won, but still the games have been pretty good. I mean, they, there have been some epic games in that yeah. series. So, uh, and I've only I've only lived in Joseph City the last ten years, but when my boys played football, it seemed like it was the winner of Joseph City Mogion were going to win the state championship there for about four or five years. So that was pretty cool. Uh, so. Anyway, it, it, it made for a lot of fun times. So uh, I hope it's a good game. Uh, but I, I think we're going to go. I, I, uh, I might even, that might even be my uh, last night of the boot. So anyway, we'll give you guys the boot. Uh, I mean, uh, when I take the boot off. So anyway, uh, we'll see how that goes. But I, I would love to come. and it, It's usually a good time. So um all right well let's go ahead and get started here uh we left off yesterday talking about limits at infinity and so i'd ask you to uh look at the next one but i just kind of want to remind you of some of the things we did in pre-calculus when we were trying to find uh, and we did it uh, i think last week too but when we're finding a limit as x approaches infinity that's like in pre-calculus where you're trying to find a horizontal asymptote. And uh, so it's the same thing. It's the idea is what's the y value when x goes on forever. And so what we did in pre-cal is we would compare the powers. And so that works too when we're trying to find a limit at infinity. So you compare the powers. And so in this one, since they tie... Uh, then what's the answer here? Anybody remember what happens when they tie, when the powers tie? It's the ratio of the leading coefficients. So it would be 5 over 3. And so then that, I mean, this is how they teach you how to do it, but you can just do it in your head. But you can divide by the highest power of x in the, in the denominator, and so what you end up with is this. And so you get 5 plus, well, a constant over infinity goes to 0. So you get 5 plus 0 minus 0 over 3 plus 0. And so it just ends up being 5 thirds. And so you can tell that just by looking at the leading coefficients. And so when the powers tie, it's just the ratio of the leading coefficients, so 5 thirds. So y equals 5 thirds is your horizontal asymptote, and 5 thirds is the limit as x approaches infinity. Okay. So now going back to this one, all right? So here the power is bigger in the denominator. So does anyone remember what happens there? The power is bigger in the denominator. What's your y or your horizontal asymptote? Mm 
No? Okay. When when you the power is bigger than the denominator, then basically you, you end up with zero every time. Okay. So you compare the powers. If the power is bigger than the denominator, your answer is zero. So see your horizontal asymptote is y equals zero, the x-axis. And that's the y value that you get for your limit. Okay, so let's see. If a function approaches infinity as x approaches a number from one side and negative infinity as it approaches from the other, let's see. Negative infinity as it approaches from the other, we say that the limit does not exist. So that's a situation where if the left and the right hand limits aren't equal, then the limit in general doesn't exist. So that's still true when x goes up to infinity on one side of a vertical asymptote and down to negative infinity on another side. All right, so going back to our horizontal asymptote. So this is kind of a summary of all of the horizontal asymptotes. The idea that when you're trying to find a horizontal asymptote, th this is actually a slide from pre-cap, but it's the same idea to find the limit at infinity. So you compare the powers, M and N. So if they're equal, then the horizontal asymptote or the limit is y equals a over b. If the denominator wins, if the denominator has a higher power, then the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. If the numerator wins, then there is no horizontal asymptote. Instead, there is a slant or oblique asymptote. And and that says stay tuned. We'll talk about that in just a minute. So, so using this pre-cal, this is a shortcut for finding the limit at plus or minus infinity. So you just find the horizontal asymptote. All right. Any questions? Okay. Okay. All right. Now, um, hey, Mr. Sean, can you go back to that slide for just a second, please? This one or the this one? That one. This Thank one. Thank okay. you. Sure. You can go now. Thanks. All right. Okay. Now, um, I know I've mentioned this before, but a lot of times when we are doing calculus on the absolute value function, then we tend to want to rewrite it as either x or negative x, depending on if x is positive or negative. Because, see, then we can do things like the derivative or, you know, do, do different things. So if x is positive, then the absolute value of x is x. If x is negative, then the absolute value of x is the opposite of x. Okay? So usually we'll try to figure out a way to drop the absolute value signs that way. Okay? So, for example... If I want, if this is my function, but I know that x is greater than or equal to 0, well, if x is greater than or equal to 0, then I can just drop the absolute values signs, okay? And so then I'll end up with that. All right, so now if I want to know what's the limit of this as x approaches infinity, then what would this answer be? 
1. Yes, y equals 1. Because the powers here tie, so it's the ratio of 1 over 1, which is 1. So y equals 1 is a horizontal asymptote, and the limit of the function as x approaches infinity is 1. Okay? All right, so try that one, please. All right, Trey, what do you have? Negative one. Negative one is correct. Because for negative values of x, absolute value of x is equal to negative x. And then when you cube that, you get negative x cubed. And so then the powers tie, and so you get one over negative one, and so it's negative one. So as x, as x approaches infinity, the limit is positive 1. As x approaches negative infinity, the limit is negative 1. Okay? All right, any questions on that? All right, good job. Okay, so uh, limits with the argument 1 over x. So here, what we can do, basically what I'm trying to show here is that there is some problems you, if you can't do it how it's written, you introduce a new variable that's the reciprocal of the given variable. And that might seem like a weird substitution, but sometimes it works, okay? Now, um, for example, let's say that, okay, let's say that we're trying to find the limit of um, sine of 1 over x as x approaches infinity, okay? So if you think, well, okay, as x approaches infinity, a constant over infinity is going to go to zero, all right? So this, so then you think, well, maybe well, that's the sine of zero. Well, so this is actually the same thing as this. If we, if we introduce a new variable, t, we say let t equal 1 over x. Well, then I can replace sine of 1 over x with sine of t. And then as x approaches infinity, 1 over x will approach zero. So t is going to approach zero. Okay, so um, this part right here, I mean, even though I know this is an example, I think this would be good to put in your notes right here. The idea of how to change a limit. If plugging in doesn't work for you, like plugging in infinity, then you can try the reciprocal and see if that works. Because sometimes that's, it actually is a little confusing. When you have like 1 over 0 or something like that, and you're like, wait a minute, does that work or what? Okay. But this, this is going to go to 0. All right. So let's... Okay, so this limit is x sine 1 over x, and as x approaches 
positive and negative infinity. So see if you can figure that out. If that would have one answer, or it would not exist, or whatever. Just see if you can reason that out. All right, Joanna, when you've got it. One. One. See, if we think of like introducing the, the new variable, then this becomes the sine of t over t as x approaches zero from the left and the right. Well, sine t over t, we actually know that that limit is one. That's the one limit we've memorized, uh, or maybe we know a couple of them, but so the limit of sine t over t as t approaches zero is one. So that's essentially what these are saying here, okay? But see, the way it's written initially up here, you might not see that right away but by doing that variable swap it actually comes out okay all right any questions on that one all right good job all right next um the sandwich theorem and horizontal asymptotes while the sandwich theorem holds you must be sure that as x approaches infinity f of x stays between the outer functions. So if you remember that the way the sandwich theorem worked is you had, you know, an upper function and then a lower function. And then the idea was is that the, the one in the middle that was sandwiched by these other two. And so when you got to a certain point, if your outer functions shared the same limit, then that middle function, even if you can't, calculate the limit directly, you can get the limit from the sandwich theorem. But what this is saying is, is that all bets are off on the sandwich theorem if it ever leaves the boundaries of the other two. If it doesn't stay in between, then the sandwich theorem doesn't hold. Okay. All right. So let's say that we wanted to... Um, find this limit, okay? So what we're gonna do is actually look at this part of it using the sandwich theorem, okay? So just the sine x over x. Well, we know that sine x over x, if it's between these two, and we know that the limit here is of zero is zero, as x approaches infinity, a constant over infinity is zero. So that means once again, and again, this is the one that we know, except, well, except this is absolute value, but this limit is going to be zero, okay? Because it's between zero and zero. So it's got to be zero. All right, so then if this limit is zero, then this limit, this is just a constant, so as x approaches anything, that limit is 2. So this limit overall is going to be 2 plus 0 or 2. Okay. So this constant part, we just sort of ignored that as we were kind of working through the sandwich theorem because we could. But I thought that sine x over x was 1. Oh. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yes, that you're right. That is the one that we've memorized. Except, see, this is this is. I'm I'm so glad that you said that. Is that we know that the limit of sine x over x equals one if x is approaching zero. But here, 
it, we're actually asked to find the limit as x approaches infinity. Okay? And so the function, so there's like a hole up here at 1. And so the function goes up here, and then it comes back down, and it levels off at 0. Okay? So the limit as x approaches 0 is 1, but the limit as x approaches infinity is 0. Okay? So I'm so glad you brought that up. Okay? All right. Any other questions on that one? All right. So this says... Find the limit as x approaches 0 to the right of x times the greatest integer of 1 over x. Now, you might, we really don't know how to do that greatest integer. I mean, maybe you could plug in or something. But here's the trick, is that x times the greatest integer function lives between these two values. So use the sandwich theorem to figure out what the limit is. All right, so Ashley, when you've got it. She's not here. Oh, that's right. All right, Autumn. One. One. Because as x approaches 0 from the right, this is going to go to 1. This is a constant, so it goes to 1. So this has to go to 1. Okay? So that's a lot. Where did you get the 1 minus x from? The 1 minus... Oh, this right here, that's just, that would be given to you in the problem. Okay? Because on, on the sandwich theorem in calculus one, I always give you these. Okay? Uh, if later in calc two or calc three, I might ask you to figure it out and where you have to come up with those functions. Okay? But for right now, don't that, I'll give the give you those. Well, oh. All right, so next we have limits of the form infinity minus infinity. So here what we can do is, is we can multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate, okay? So this is another what we call indeterminate form. So the first indeterminate form I taught you was 0 over 0. And that means that we don't know the answer. It's not zero, it's not undefined, it's not, it just means we gotta do something else. And so there, what we did is we factored and canceled and then tried plugging in again. But here, if we have this form where we plug in and we get infinity minus infinity, well, that's an indeterminate form because you might say, well, this will give us a zero, right? But see, what if this infinity is way bigger than that infinity? 
So then the answer might be infinity. Or if this one goes faster, then we might get negative infinity. Anyway, we get, it's just an indeterminate form, okay? All right, is there a question there in solo? Do you guys have a question? Okay. We got a little confused with those random shapes on the bottom, but I think we're good now. Yeah, this is, um, so if we have the square root of blob minus uh, maple leaf, then you multiply by the conjugate, which would be the square root of blob plus maple leaf. Okay. Anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll do some examples here. All right. So this is find the limit as X approaches infinity of X minus the square root of X squared plus 16. All right. So the idea is, is that first you try plugging in. And so here you'll get infinity minus, well, infinity squared plus 16 and then take the square root. That's infinity. So infinity minus infinity. So that's an indeterminate form. Okay. So then what we do is we try multiplying by the conjugate. So the conjugate. So think of this limit as itself over one. And then we're going to multiply numerator and denominator by the conjugate. So that would be x plus the radical in both numerator and denominator. All right, now, when you multiply out conjugates, the middle terms drop out. So we're going to get x squared minus, and then the stuff underneath the radical is going to come out. So we'll get x squared minus x squared plus 16 over x plus the radical. So now if we simplify, those x squares are going to cancel. All right, and so now we try plugging in again. All right, and so when we plug in again, we get a constant over infinity. And so what's that going to be? Zero. Zero. So the answer is zero. Okay. Any questions? All right, so try that one, please. All right, so Caroline, when you've got it. Zero. Zero? All right, let's see. All right, so first of all, you're going to multiply both numerator and denominator by the conjugate. And so in the numerator, you just get uh, the x plus 9. Let's clean that up a little bit. So x plus 9 minus x plus 4 all over... The sum of those two radicals. So we simplify the numerator and the x's cancel. So we get 
5 over the sum of the radicals. So now we try plugging in again, and we get a constant over infinity, so that's 0. All right, great job. Okay. Um, so, Caroline, were you born in South Carolina? No, I was born in Sholo. Born in Sholo, so I had to give the name Caroline. Is that just your nickname? My, my grandma's name is Carolyn, so my name's Caroline. Oh, okay, okay. Because, see, I, I lived, I, I taught in South Carolina for 16 years, and there were a lot of girls named Caroline in the South. So, whoops, very popular name. And Savannah, and Georgia, and Caroline. Okay, so now let's talk about uh, oblique asymptotes, or slant asymptotes. So if the power of the numerator of a rational function is greater than the power of the denominator, there is no horizontal asymptote. But instead, there is a, an oblique or slant asymptote. Now, most books call it a slant asymptote, but this, your book calls it an oblique. Okay. So how do you find a slant asymptote? Um, use polynomial division, but ignore the remainder. Okay? So that's when the power is bigger in the numerator. Okay. All right. So let's say I wanted to um, to um, find the asymptotes. So here I compare the powers. Well, the numerator wins. So if the numerator wins, there's no horizontal asymptote. Okay. And so the, to find the slant asymptote, you do the polynomial division. So Let's set up the polynomial division. So remember, with polynomial division, you have to have all your placeholders, and uh, the polynomials need to be in descending order. Okay. So, um, so then you look at the leading terms, and you say, well, what times 2x is x squared? Now, I know you did polynomial division in, um, in college algebra. The difference, though, is, is that you probably didn't have one like this where you had to deal with fractions, okay? Because the what times 2x is x squared? That would be 1 half x. And see, normally we don't do that to you in college algebra where you'd have to come up with a 1 half there. But now we do. So 1 half x. So then once you get your number up here, then you multiply through and say 1 half x times 2x is x squared. 1 half x times negative 4 is negative 2x. Then you change the signs. Boom, boom. This goes to 0. This goes to 2x. Bring down the negative 3. So now you look at the leading terms again and you say what times 2x is 2x? Well, that would be 1. So you multiply through and you get 2x minus 4. Change the signs here, boom, boom. And you can actually stop at that point because we really don't care about the remainder for slant asymptotes. But, so the, the slant asymptote is y equals 1 half x or x over 2 plus 1. Okay, You just ignore the remainder. So to graph that, see you graph 1 the y-intercept, and then the slope is one-half, so up one over two, and boom, there's your oblique or slant asymptote, okay? And so that helps you know how the graph goes, okay? 
we all we got a vertical asymptote at x equals two because that's the value that gives you zero in the denominator. So once you graph these asymptotes, then you can graph get the graph uh, to approach those. The, the asymptotes really help you be accurate with your graph. All right, questions. Okay, so find the oblique asymptote for that. All right, so Weston, when you've got it. X plus two. Okay. That's it. So uh, I do want you to put Y equals in front when you're, um, if, if the problem just says find the asymptote, then uh, Y equals X plus two. Okay. Now, um, let's see. Did anyone have any trouble with the polynomial division? It wants me to go through that. All right. Um, other thing, since we're, our divisor is just x plus or minus a number, we can also use synthetic division for that. So just to kind of a reminder how synthetic division goes. Uh, if your divisor is x minus 2, you put the opposite of that number in the magic box. And then you write down just the coefficients, 1, 0, negative 9. So notice we still had to have the placeholder. And then you bring down the first number, and then you multiply and add. Multiply and add. And so then this is the remainder constant coefficient of x. So x plus 2, y equals x plus 2, is your oblique or slant asymptote. Any questions on that one? Okay. So let's see. Okay. All right. So once again, okay, I mentioned this, I think, on Friday and or Thursday and on Monday that when we say a limit is equal to negative infinity or positive infinity, we are not saying the limit exists. There's still no limit, it's just we're saying that it approaches infinity or negative infinity just to give us a better understanding of what's going on. But it still doesn't have a limit. Okay? And then, also, then again, I think I've shown this exact slide like three times, that when you're approaching from the left or the right, if they don't match, is if you're approaching x from the left, it goes to a negative infinity. 
you're approaching one from the right, it goes to positive infinity. And since those don't match, then the limit in general doesn't exist. All right, so um, find this limit for me. All right, so Kayla, when you've got it. What's the limit of the function as x approaches 3? One. All right. Let's see. Um, did you use the graph or did you use the function? Or did the you function. Okay. So let's do it that way. So, so when you plug in, uh, when you're uh, looking at values slightly less than three. So let's say two point nine. Okay. So two point nine minus three. Well, three minus three. It, it it's going to approach zero. Okay. And so if you have a constant divided by zero, that's going to approach what? A constant over zero. Asymptote. Yeah. So, but, so is it going to approach infinity or negative infinity here? Infinity. Yeah, because this is positive. And once you plug in a number and square it, it's going to be positive. So this is going to approach infinity. All right. Now, as you approach three from the right, so value slightly bigger than three, then again, it's going to go to a constant over zero. So this is positive. Again, when you square something, it's going to be positive. So this is going to also approach infinity. So then the limit in general as x approaches 3 is what? Infinity. Infinity. Okay. Okay, how about this other extra question that I have up here at the top? What's the limit of the function as x approaches infinity? What would that be? Zero. Zero. Because see, now the power is bigger in the denominator. Okay. Now, you could also answer all, all those questions looking at this graph. As x approaches 3 from the left, the y value is approaching infinity. As x approaches 3 from the right, the y value is approaching infinity. So the limit in general is infinity. And then as x approaches infinity, the y value is going to zero. All right, so if uh, a function approaches infinity as x approaches a number from one side and negative infinity as it approaches from the others, then we say the limit does not exist. Okay? So, I, you know. All right, so we've just got a little, like, five minutes or whatever on this uh, lesson. And so we'll be able to finish this up. And just so you know, this is um, 